country is the mayor of the uh, city of Maimana from Afghanistan. And how does it look for you, uh, these kind of untraditional forms of cooperation after 2014 between Afghani municipalities and uh, municipalities of the European Union? Is that important for security enhancement in Afghanistan? I think uh, all such of news are so now, not only after 2014, but also before the 2014, very important to give to the people of Afghanistan the trust that the cooperation uh, between European countries and Afghanistan will also continue after 2014. Because to be very frank, there are always people there who doubt or are afraid mostly that this cooperation will not continue. I think all such approaches will only strengthen the uh, knowledge that uh, this is not a short time project for us in Europe, but it is one of the permanent, permanent goals for us that we will not, not just cut the, our common project, but we will really try to find the ways of cooperation also in the future, like such projects are so now. What is Estonia going to do after 2014 in Afghanistan? I think we are just now in the process of discussion. It's not an easy question to answer because first of all we don't know exactly how it goes. We have several, like, several years to go. How it happens, how the withdrawal of the troops happens, what will happen exactly. Will they stay some troops there, in which form, in uh, which way. I think it's all open and it's also open what will be exactly the security situation in Afghanistan in the field in after 2014 when the ISAF uh, ends its activities. So in one hand there are a lot of open questions from the other and we must do the plans and we must uh, I think deal parallelly with both of them. We are just now are in this process in Estonia. Another question. Um Recently, Russia said that uh, they will probably, until the end of this year, put uh, Iskander missiles in Kaliningrad, and uh, NATO Secretary General was also expressing some doubts about uh, these kinds of uh, developments. What's your position on that? Of course, uh, each country can look at itself how it defends and guarantees its security. So in this moment, from this aspect, it's hard to say anything that's a first decision. From other point of view, I must say we don't understand these decisions. I think does really somebody believe that uh, Estonia, Latvia or Lithuania or Poland would attack Russia? This is not the uh, 17th century anymore. There will be no Polish hussars in the, on the streets of Moscow. Uh, it's absolutely clear, I must say, in everybody and against whom such a very modern weapons are actually needed. It's uh, just not understandable. Looking on the Russian security interests and problems, I must confess that from my opinion, the Russian problems are actually in other regions, uh, not here where we have developed actually very fruitful cooperation in many, many fields. And actually, uh, you touched upon smart defense issues today, uh, talking with the uh, publics. Um, well, commonly we think about smart defense in Baltics as a project of uh, air policing, but are there any other areas that could be considered as Baltic input in smart defense? Yes, absolutely. There are many areas. I must say, we in the Baltic countries started the smart defense significantly earlier as it happened in in Europe or in the NATO now, when we just look on such a project uh, as we have the common air surveillance system, we have the Patron common, uh, common uh, fleet, we have the port def call, the common education facility for all three border countries and also other countries. I think these are all very good examples of the smart defense. In this sense, it's very proud when we for the countries go to the NATO meeting where the smart defense is talked so much. We are we know what that is. We have always tried to do this because it's it is really smart. And it's very good to present actually now to the NATO what we have done, what we have so now achieved 
and I think this uh, creates also very good possibilities for the future because there is a lot of more what we can do and there is a lot of more things what we discussed by example as the minister said the common procurements and all such of things which can be really useful for us and uh, I'm very happy to see in the latest time and latest meeting that how we have moved to the more concrete project, to the more concrete proposal, to the more concrete uh, uh, discussions. I think it's necessary for everybody. Yes, thank you for your opinion. Thank you and all success to you.